Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and in today's video, I'm gonna answer your questions that you've posted on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Welcome back, everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking some of your questions that you have posted on our YouTube channel. It's one of my favorite videos to film because I love it whenever you guys ask questions and leave comments in the comment section of these videos. Now, if this is your first time visiting this channel, please make sure you hit that red subscribe button so you can join this community of those who love quality craftsmanship and tradition. And if you haven't visited KirbyAllison.com, please do so. Of course, it's how we support this YouTube channel. And there you'll find the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other great clothing accessories for the well-dressed, like this sovereign grade necktie wearing and Simono Godard pocket square. So our first question is on our shoe care Q&A video. This is from Julie K and it reads, I've noticed you recommend using Saphir Canadian cream for part of the process of reconditioning your briefcase, but also have you heard of La de Pomadeur cream polish as having three to five times more pigment? So if I'm trying to recondition a high quality full grain leather purse and I start with the Juvicure, uh, why wouldn't I want to use a Pomadeur versus the Canadian cream as the next step in the process? So great question, uh, and this really gets into the differences in reconditioning uh, between larger leather goods uh, and shoes. So the difference between the Pomadeur cream polish and the Juvicure is that the Juvicure is a more of a permanent pigment that you're not going to have to worry about rubbing off as easily as a Pomadeur cream polish. Uh, and also it's designed to spread over a larger uh, kind of surface area, uh, unlike a cream polish, which is really meant for kind of smaller leather goods. Now the reason the Canadian uh, cream polish is so important to use afterwards is that this contains those hard waxes that is really gonna kind of seal that pigment in uh, and prevent it from rubbing off. Now, whenever it comes to pigment, one of the things that's important to know is that the Canadian cream polishes are available in different pigments. So uh, if all you're needing is to just kind of tint, you know, in the same way that shoe polish or the Saphir Pomadeur cream polish kind of tints a leather shoe, uh, I would actually recommend uh, just using, you know, something like the Saphir leather lotion uh, for conditioning and then just uh, shining it off with that uh, light pigment uh, with the Canadian uh, cream polish. Now the Canadian has really been designed uh, to be used on those larger leather goods. Uh, of course, it comes uh, in a larger tube. Uh, this is a two and a half a full ounces, 75 milliliters. Uh, and it also is going to spread uh, much more easily and then buff off more easily than your traditional cream polish. Uh, this one is you know, really kind of in between a cream and a wax polish, to be honest. It's got that high concentration of bees waxes, uh, which again is gonna give you that hard finish to prevent any of that pigment from rubbing off. Uh, but if you're not looking for the pigment, then of course the Canadian cream polish uh, in just the neutral uh, is an absolutely great product. And uh, I feel like this is one of the most uh, underappreciated products uh, in our entire arsenal. It's great for belts. Uh, it's great for uh, briefcases, of course. Uh, it's even great for uh, really any small leather good. Uh, you could even use it you know, on a leather chair if you wanted. So Canadian Cream Polish, I highly recommend it. Of course, it's available uh, in a bunch of different pigments. A lot of people use that along with the Saphir Leather Lotion for that conditioning. Uh, and the two of these, uh, really work exceptionally together. Our next question today is from our How to Shine Your Cowboy Boots video. Uh, this is one of my favorite videos, uh, shining a friend of mine's at cowboy boots. Uh, and this question is from Ray, and it reads, I have a pair of cowboy boots with colored stitching on the toe area. What can one do in this case so as to not change the color of the stitching? Other than using a neutral uh, cream polish, there's really just not much you can do uh, to avoid um, you know, really changing some of the color of that stitching, especially on a pair of cowboy boots that can have a lot of decorative stitching uh, on the shoe. Over time, you're just naturally gonna get a little bit of pigment uh, on those, um, on that thread, uh, and it's going to darken a little bit. So good buff should pull most off. If you're particularly worried about it, and what I would recommend is just applying you know, with your finger to kind of avoid those areas and then just gently buffing. You could use a neutral cream polish, but otherwise, honestly, I'd say it's just something not to worry that much about. 
Okay, next up we have a question from our edge and heel care uh, video. A well-maintained edge and heel that's properly recolored uh, and that is shined, a really sets apart a well-shined shoe from the rest. Now this is my uh, bespoke uh, suede shoes, uh, semi brogues from Dominic Casey. Of course, you wouldn't shine these, but you can see the nice shine and even coloration we have here on the heel. Uh, again, just puts a level of finish on this shoe. Uh, that you know would be very easily missed if you didn't spend the time on edges and heels. But I've always said that edges and heels are kind of like shoelaces where they have a disproportionate impact on the overall look of the shoe. You can have a beautifully polished pair of shoes, uh, but if the shoelaces are old and worn, uh, they just are going to bring down the overall look of the entire shoe. And the same is uh, true for edges and heels. And so that's why we've got this three-part series. Uh, we start out with the first video, very basic edge and heel care, and then we go uh, to the last video, which is really advanced edge and heel care. It's almost a total uh, makeover of the edges and heels. Uh, and you can just see in those videos how dramatic of an effect it is. So let's get on to our question. This is from Francisco. It says, hi Kirby, I saw the video of you in which you used a color restoration for the edge. What is the difference between these two methods of the edge? So that's actually a great question. What Francisco is referring to is in some of our old edge and heel care videos, I use the Renovating Repair Cream, which is a um, resin-based kind of pigmented cream. The best way to think of it is it's, like, it's almost like oil paint, right? It's a very thick, it is not transparent at all. And so what I really disliked about the Renovating Repair Cream is after you would apply it, uh, really the edge and heel would lose all of its characters. I mean, you really wouldn't see the different layers of the heel stack, the way that that's built up. There was no transparency to it, and it just looked a little plastified, uh, if you will. Now, what I like about the Pomodier Cream Polish uh, and the mirror glass, uh, gloss really used in conjunction with one another is that the Saphir Pomodier Cream Polish is going to add that pigment, it's going to add that recoloration, uh, but it's still transparent. It's just tinting and kind of filling in. It's not going to totally change the character uh, or the texture of the edge and the heel. And then you add some uh, Saphir Mirror Gloss on top of that and again, the hard waxes and the mirror gloss are what's gonna give you that nice high shine uh, that you just don't get using the renovating repair cream. So uh, Francisco, uh, the short answer is, is that you know my total uh, methodology and approach towards edge and heel care has just changed dramatically since we filmed that first video. Uh, and this is the new way I take care of all my edges and heels. And it's what I'd recommend for anyone else really seeking to maintain their shoes. Question number four today is from our uh, what should you wear to a black tie event video. So this video goes into detail on the rules of uh, dressing for black tie. And his question is, uh, what are proper shoes for white tie and tail? You know, this is a great question uh, and an opportunity to really differentiate a black tie from white tie. So black tie in America is really the most formal we ever dress up here. I mean, very rarely in the United States do you see uh, people wearing tails. That's more of a European tradition uh, and level of formality. Uh, but black tie uh, is a traditional tuxedo. It's a short coat. It's cut just like uh, you know, a normal dinner jacket. You know, you've got the special trousers with this double braided kind of satin rib that goes along the outside edge. Uh, you're wearing it, of course, with a special uh, tuxedo shirt, you know, like the one we just filmed in our uh, Charvet video, pleated with a wing collar, or fold down collar, black tie, bow tie. And you really should be wearing special shoes like a pair of opera pumps uh, or a hole cuts or even cap toe oxfords with the proper mirror gloss. Now, white tie is the most formal you can dress up, and you still see a lot of events in England uh, and in Europe, for that matter, that are white tie. Uh, you're wearing still all black, but it's a different cut to the jacket. It has tails. Now, whenever it comes to white tie, uh, there is absolutely no room to break the rules. The reason the rules exist is because you look better for every single rule you follow, and for every rule you don't follow, you look worse. So whenever it comes to shoes for white tie, there's really no option. You've got to wear a pair of opera pumps with proper 100% silk uh, socks, over-the-calf socks. It's the only way to do it. It's the only thing out there. Your only choice is whether or not it's a pair of patent leather opera pumps or whether or not it's a pair of just a calf skin with a proper mirror shine uh, on the toe. So great question. And uh, Alan, 
If you're dressing up for white time anytime soon, you know, please ping me and let me know. All right, last question from the day is on our 150,000 subscriber live stream. This was a black tie live stream. And this is from Trevor Bain. It says, extremely great milestone, 150,000, the best videos, uh, I would say. It's difficult to choose. Uh, so I'll say George Cleverly, Gatiano and Gerling, and the shirt maker in France, Charvet. As for new content, I would be going to some high quality mills to see how the fabric is produced. And if Bianca and Budget allowed it, it would be nice to see you go to Japan and uh, go see Yohei Fukuda, a shoemaker. So <laughs> you really hit on the point there is whether or not my wife would allow me to get away for that long. You know, the Gaziano and Girling factory tour, I think is one of uh, my highlights. You know, the walking tour in Paris, where we go kind of drop by Charvet and then we uh, enjoy a sandwich at the end of that video. Again, another kind of highlight, that video literally just came together uh, spontaneously. You know, without question, the John Lobb uh, video from London, absolute highlight along with the Huntsman New York one. I mean, those two videos, I think, were some of our best work that we've uh, still to this day put out. Some of our walking tours favorite videos. So we'll try to link to some of these below. Uh, as far as uh, future uh, places, I mean, I've contemplated with the idea of kind of setting up a Patreon or a GoFundMe or something to kind of help us raise the budget to go to a place like Japan. I mean, goodness gracious, there is so much amazing content that we could capture there. It's even, it goes without question. But if you guys would uh, love to see me go to Japan or would like to see me in Italy, let me know in the comments section below. If you know anyone that works at Netflix or any other series, we'd love to have our own travel series you know, really traveling the world in search of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Or if you're just someone that would like to underwrite one of these trips, we'd be happy to oblige. But Trevor, hey, thank you so much for your question. And uh, uh, thank you for watching our 150,000 subscriber live stream. These Q&A videos are really uh, among my favorite videos to film because it gives me an opportunity to just express my appreciation to all of you uh, for your time watching our videos, engaging, asking questions. And as I always say, even if you don't have a question to ask, you know, please, by all means, just chime in, raise your hand and make a comment. Let me know what you think, express your opinion, uh, and just, you know, maybe chime in with a story or an anecdote of your own. If you're new to this channel, please make sure you hit that red subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. It's the best way to stay up to date. Sign up for our newsletter at Kirby Allison. Follow me on Instagram at Kirby Allison. Now, these are some of the best ways to stay up to date about what's going on in our world. Uh, and of course, if you haven't visited KirbyAllison.com, you know, please do. It's how we support this YouTube channel. And there you'll find some of the highest quality luxury garment care items, hangers, garment bags, garment brushes, uh, shoe care accessories like our Saphir shoe polish, uh, Wellington shoe shine brushes, Wellington shoelaces, the list goes on. And of course, these three have right here, I uh, even forgot that they were here uh, through the video. This is from our new uh, fall collection, fall 2020. We've got a beautiful printed silk hop sack uh, tie. The hop sack gives it this nice kind of visual texture here. Again, I love that you can see the fall colors with this kind of orange brown. I mean, this is a real autumn color, another beautiful one. And one of the things I love about Jack cards is just the beautiful rich texture and this kind of claret burgundy uh, is an absolutely beautiful regal color, I love it. And then this is actually a holdover from our spring summer collection. But I have to say, this particular yellow tie uh, has really become one of my favorites. I just enjoy wearing it. It's a beautiful shade of yellow. It's easy to pair, it's bright, it pops. Uh, and I have to say, uh, I've absolutely loved wearing this tie. All available at KirbyAllison.com. Uh, so if you haven't visited KirbyAllison.com, all the products that we sell there are exclusive to just KirbyAllison.com. We don't sell on Amazon. And so if there's anything that we can help you with, uh, we'd love uh, to do that. And of course, as you all know, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching today. In today's video, I'm wearing one of my newest odd jackets. This is a bespoke jacket by Himmerjani Brothers, or Davidge Bespoke, made from Dorme uh, fabric. It's an 83% wool, 17% linen uh, fabric. Absolutely amazing stuff. Great for summer, beautiful visual texture. I absolutely love this new jacket. The dress shirt I'm wearing, of course, is one of my signature uh, bespoke white Charvet dress shirts. 
uh, tried and true, hard to go wrong with something this, uh, this beautiful. I'm wearing it with a sovereign grade ancient matter necktie. This is from our new uh, fall collection, fall 2020, uh, and it is a green ancient matter tie. Uh, absolutely beautiful tie. Love the chalky hand of this. I'm wearing a pair of trousers by Him or Johnny Brothers also. It's a heavy twill trouser uh, and a pair of bespoke Foster & Son semi-brogue dress shoes. Uh, these are uh, absolutely exceptionally comfortable shoes. I can't tell you how much I love wearing them. I almost forgot. White Simino Godard uh, woven linen archival pocket square. Uh, this is a pocket square that they rediscovered, uh, made in the 1970s, I think. Uh, absolutely exceptionally made, incredibly finely woven linen pocket square. Uh, really special item. Of course, all of these accessories available exclusively at KirbyAllison.com.